Hello everyone, my name is Mini Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about theories of investment for UGC NET. And topics for today's video are Keynesian theory of investment and Tobin Q theory of investment. First of all, we are going to talk about Keynesian theory of investment. According to Keynesian theory of investment, investment decisions are taken by comparing marginal efficiency of capital with interest rate. According to Keynesian theory of investment, investment decisions are taken by comparing marginal efficiency of capital with interest rate. Means how much money we will invest in our business, it's all depend on marginal efficiency of capital and interest rate in market. We all know about interest rate and marginal efficiency of capital means the profit expectation from new business investment means how much profit we expect from new business investment, it will be called marginal efficiency of capital. We will clearly understand this concept with the help of one example. Suppose uh, you want to deposit your money in bank and you will receive annually 20% interest rate on it. On the other hand, marginal efficiency of capital is more than 20%, means profit expectation from business investment is more than 20%. Obviously, in this case, you will not deposit your money in bank, you will invest in your business because your marginal efficiency of capital is more as compared to your interest rate. And according to this theory, whenever we invest our money in business, we compare margin efficiency of capital with interest rate. If margin efficiency of capital is more than interest rate, or we can say that if profit expectation from business investment is more than interest rate, then we definitely invest in our business, otherwise not. So marginal efficiency of capital is very important. Keynesian theory gave different concept of marginal efficiency of capital. According to Keynes, marginal efficiency of capital is rate of discount which make prospective yield just equal to supply price. Please listen carefully. According to Keynes, marginal efficiency of capital is rate of discount which make prospective yield just equal to supply price. In order to understand margin efficiency of capital, we must know about what is prospective yield and what is supply price. Or we can say that there are mainly two determinants of margin efficiency of capital. One is prospective yield, second is supply price. First of all, one by one we discuss about these two concepts. First of all, we will see what is prospective yield. Prospective yield means total expected return from new asset during its whole life. Prospective yield means the total expected return from new asset during its whole life. For example, you purchased a machine at rupees 1 lakh and lifespan of this machine is 3 years and first year you expect a return from this machine is 8,000. Second year you expect 3,000. Third year you expect 2,000. Total of this is 13,000. This 13,000 will be called prospective yield because prospective yield is total expected return from new asset during its whole life. Now we will see supply price. Supply price is cost of producing or we can say the cost of buying new asset. Supply price is cost of producing or we can say the cost of buying new asset. In supply price, we only include cost of new asset, not the cost of existing asset. And prospective yield is expected income from new asset and supply price is cost of new asset. And according to Keynes, marginal efficiency of capital is rate of discount that make prospective yield just equal to supply price. Or we can say that according to Keynes, marginal efficiency of capital is a rate of discount that make income expected from new asset just equal to the cost of new asset. Now with the help of this formula, we will see how marginal efficiency of capital make a prospective yield and supply price just equal to each other. In this formula, SP is our supply price or we can say the SP is cost of producing new asset and R1 is expected return from asset in first year, R2 is expected return from asset in second year, 
आर थ्री इज एक्सपेक्टेड रिटर्न फ्रॉम एसेड इन थर्ड ईयर आर फोर इज एक्सपेक्टेड रिटर्न फ्रॉम एसेड इन फोर्थ ईयर एंड टिल आर एन इट्स ऑल डिपेंड ऑन लाइफ स्पैन ऑफ एसेड बट टोटल ऑफ आर वन आर टू आर थ्री आर फोर विल बी कोल्ड प्रस्पेक्टिव विल्ड एज वी अर्लियर डिस्कस प्रस्पेक्टिव विल्ड मीन्स टोटल एक्सपेक्टेड रिटर्न फ्रॉम एसेड ड्यूरिंग इट्स होल लाइफ सो हेयर वी अज्यूम सप्लाई प्राइज ऑफ एसेड इज थ्री थाउजेंड and we assume life span of asset is only 2 years and first year we expect from this asset mean first year we expect a return from this asset is equal to 1100 second year we expect a return from this asset is equal to 2420 and total of the because the life span of asset is only 2 year and total of this is uh, 3520 this 3500 will be called our prospective yield so here we see supply price is 3000 and prospective yield is 3520 so here you can see prospective yield is more than supply price and according to keynes marginal efficiency of capital is a discounting rate that make prospective yield just equal to supply price so what is i here i is discounting rate or we can say i is marginal efficiency of capital now we will see how this discounting rate or we can say how this marginal efficiency of capital make prospective yield just equal to a supply price so here we assume value of i is 10% as we know i is our discounting rate or we can say the i is margin efficiency of capital and here we assume value of i is 10% now we will see how this discounting rate make supply price just equal to prospective yield so first of all we will put value of all variable in this formula uh, value of uh, supply price is uh, 3000 that's why we put 3000 here life span of machine is 2 years means life span of asset is 2 year and first year expected return from asset is 1100 that's why we will put 1100 here and second year expected return from asset is 2420 that's why we put here 2420 and when we solve this equation first side will become equal to 1000 and second th side will become equal to 2000 and you can see now both side we have 3000 mean prospective yield has become just equal to supply price earlier supply uh, earlier uh, prospective yield was more than supply price now with the help of this discounting rate prospective yield has become just equal to supply price and this is exactly margin efficiency of capital according to keynesian theory marginal efficiency of capital is a discounting rate that make prospective yield just equal to supply price but why we use this discounting rate with the help of this discounting rate we can know a present value of our future cash flow from new investment because these are a future expectation from new investment but i have to take investment decision now that's why with the help of discounting rate we can know present value of our future cash flow from new investment now we will see tobin q theory of investment this theory is given by nobel prize winner james tobin according to this theory firm may decide to raise fund for their investment through the sale of their shares according to this theory firm may decide to raise fund for their investment through the sale of their shares means firm investment decision depend on prices of their share if prices of their share is high obviously it will receive more money by selling their shares and eventually it will motivate to invest more what is q in this theory q equal to market value of installed capital over replacement cost of installed capital what is market value of installed capital market value of installed capital is decided by prices of share if prices of share are very high that means market value of installed capital is also very high replacement cost of installed capital means cost of replacing asset based on its current price or we can say that replacement cost means cost of buying new asset based on its current price if value of q is more than 1 that means market value of installed capital is more than the replacement cost suppose market value of installed capital is equal to 40 and a replacement cost of installed capital is 20 
40 divided by 20 is equal to 2. Here you can see value of Q is more than 1. That means market value of installed capital is more than the replacement cost. And this will motivate a firm to invest more because the prices of their share are high in market as compared to cost of new investment. As we know, firm will invest more if market value of installed capital is high as compared to replacement cost. Now, with the help of this diagram, we will clearly understand this concept. First diagram on x-axis, we have capital stock and y-axis, we have top in Q. This Q we have on y-axis. In second diagram on x-axis, we have net investment and y-axis, we have value of a top in Q. And DD are demand curve which represent demand of a firm shares. So initially, equilibrium point is E. Here value of top in Q is OQ. That means value of top in Q is equal to 1. 20 is value of installed capital and 20 is uh, replacement cost of installed capital. 20 divided by 20 is equal to 1. Means initially value of top in Q is equal to 1. Now suppose demand for a company share increase. As demand for a company share increase, demand curve will shift forward from DD to DD1. Now our new equilibrium point is E1. If demand for a firm share increase, that means prices of share increase. If prices of share increase, that means market value of installed capital will also increase. Now market value of installed capital is 40 and replacement cost is 20. 40 divided by 20 is equal to 2. Here you can see value of Q is more than 1. That means value of installed capital is very high. As we earlier discussed, if value of uh, installed capital is very high, that means prices of shares are very high. If prices of shares are very high, that will motivate firm to invest more in new asset. As a result, firm will increase their investment on new asset. So, our investment will increase from OT to OT1. So, here you can see at new equilibrium point E1, our investment has increased from OT to OT1. So, this is all about theories of investment. I think you got it. And thank you so much for watching this video. Bye. Take care.